Wall Street is about to close out the quarter. The major averages are on track to finish with modest gains despite the major swings we saw month to month. Those swings driven by competing narratives. The U.S.-China trade deal is on. No, it's not. The consumer is holding up well. No, they're not. The Fed is going to cut rates again. No, not yet. Which narrative will win out? For Q4, let's bring in Paul Hickey. He's co-founder of Bespoke Investment Group. Art Hogan is chief market strategist at National Securities. And it's great to see you both. And Art, I'll just start with you because the fourth quarter of last year broke pretty decisively in favor of the Bears. Um, how do you see the setup this time around? Yeah, they're completely different, right? So the fourth quarter of last year, we were concerned about a Fed that was on autopilot and they were going to raise rates. Believe that? They're going to raise rates yeah. three times. We were at three and a quarter on the 10-year. Right, and we're actually looking at a global economic slowdown that is still persistent, but it's not increasing in magnitude. We had the U.S. economy slowing down, but we're stabilized at trend growth of about 2% GDP. So completely different fourth quarter. We know what we know this fourth quarter versus last year where we did Or maybe, Paul, the way to, to say it is that last time around, we had kind of reached peak optimism and then everything disappointed to the downside. The, you know, the U.S. growth, the global growth, like Art's saying, all of that kind of dragged the, the averages down. How, now are we starting off in what seems to me at least a little bit more of a pessimistic footing already here, leaving maybe some room to the upside? Yeah, Kelly, uh, I, I couldn't have said it better than Art there. It's two completely uh, backdrops that we have for the fourth quarter of last year versus the fourth quarter of this year uh, versus a tighter Fed versus a loosening Fed. But, um, you know, so I think when we look at the overall landscape here, we, we're starting with a more restrained outlook because we, we had this awful fourth quarter last year. Right. And we saw some weakness last week heading into the end of the third quarter. So there's concerns are, are we headed for a repeat of the fourth quarter. But when we look at the overall issues, both positive and negative facing the market, we see more positives than negatives here. Uh, so we think the red from uh, the fourth quarter of last year may not necessarily be like gold medal type returns in the fourth quarter, <laughs> but, but silver at the very least. Sure. So I know both of you have kind of things you watch on your dashboard uh, to try to figure out what, what's happening with financial conditions. Art, first to you, what kind of screens to you and, and says, OK, we're, you know, things still look OK out there um, versus those who, you know, say the slowdown's already underway, the yield curve is inverted, that's all you need to do. Right, so the twos and tens aren't inverted any longer. I think one of the most important things to us is there is no real distress in the credit markets, which is important. I think the most important thing for us that has inflected higher over the last three months is housing. So when we saw new home sales, existing home sales, better than expected, Great the housing point. prices coming in. That's such an important industry, and it's virtually the first time since the great financial crisis that we've seen that inflect higher. Housing's so important in and of itself to the U.S. economy. We've been waiting for a long time for uh, household starts, home formation to start picking up, and, and, and you know, thankfully it, it's turning the corner. So I think that's one of the inflection points that nobody's talking and about. And so you're basically saying don't lean against this economy or this market when you have something like housing turning up. Do you think that was just a temporary thing, though, because rates got as low as they did? I mean, when you have the 10-year right. going below 1.5% in August, we would say, well, we're already moved back up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's more about inventory than it is about affordability in terms of rates. So it's the inventory shifting. I think home builders finally got it that you know, there's two um, populations of people that want the same house. It's the it's the first time buyer, and then it's the it's the it's the boomers that are actually saying, "I want to downsize," and 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 they're going after this. There wasn't enough of that product, so that's been the problem for the last three years. Yeah, that product's increasing. Inventory's gotten better, and, and affordability's there. And so, Paul, as we look towards the fourth quarter, I'm also curious what kind of I don't know if technicals is the right term, but positioning you see in this market. So as Dom mentioned off the top, utilities are up for six quarters in a row now. That hasn't happened in 25 years. The financials were just the best performer for the month. What kind of, to you, shouts extreme one way or the other? Well, I think you look at the utilities and defensives uh, doing so well, it just shows you where the overall stance of investors is. You know, we're not chasing these, uh, you know, these high-flying IPOs. Uh, so there's more of a, definitely more of a restrained attitude on the part of investors here. Uh, the breadth of uh, the S&P 500 a cumulative AD line hit a new high just in the last couple of weeks. That's led us out of every other correction we've seen since early 18 or, hmm. or pullback. So we, we have no reason to believe that won't happen again. Uh, you know, the S&P long-term moving averages are still rising. The economy is stabilizing, as we were saying earlier. You know, we're, we're seeing, we definitely saw the economy show signs of weakness, but it's not necessarily this rolling over type of activity right. that we've seen. 
So, and the big worry is, you know, uncertainty on the market. That could affect a lot of things. And that coming into the uh, Q3 earnings season, we're thinking to ourselves, okay, this could be really bad. Companies could really be citing uncertainty and problems with uncertainty in their calls. But the pace of earnings warnings heading into the end of the third quarter is right in line with the historical average. So we've wow, seen no up. meaning. Yeah, we've seen no meaningful uptick uh, versus this time in prior years over the last 10 years. So it uh, just goes to show we may see positive surprises there in the fact that analyst sentiment has been very weak and they've been lowering estimates heading into the uh, reporting period. All right. Well, that's all helpful. Guys, thanks very much. Appreciate it. And if you're wrong, we'll, you know, we'll do self-flagellation at the end of the quarter, just like we did last year. Paul, <laughs> Look like forward the, to it. Yeah, Art Hogan, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. <laughs>